Not the guy you're looking for. Fuck you. Welcome everyone to Dead Talk Live. I'm your host Viz and it is my honor to welcome our very special guest from Black Summer Netflix hit show Justin Chu Carey. Justin, thank you so much for being here with us. How are you doing tonight, man? Good, good. I'm doing very good. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good and it's an honor to have you here with us. So let's get started. We have lots of questions from you. Let's go to the beginning. How did you first hear about this show that Netflix was putting together with zombies called Black Summer, and how did you audition for it? Uh, that is a good question. You know, I mean, you know, in L.A., as an actor, you just kind of, you kind of just constantly auditioning, you know, uh, and you, you, you can't really hang your heart in, on one audition or the other. There's stuff you, you want, but, you know, you just are kind of just doing it. And so this is one of those auditions. Uh, I, I mean, I remember doing it. I felt felt pretty good about it. It was an on tape audition. Um, and funny stories that my my manager at the time, a wonderful woman named Marie Wilson, uh, she for whatever reason, she read the breakdown and they were looking for like a older white male. Wow. Uh, and my showrunner later tells me he was thinking of more like a Mickey work type. Oh, <laughs> white male and I guess for whatever reason my manager read the sides because they sent it to her uh, requesting to see a couple of her other clients and she said she just heard me saying the words it's that that, that first um, monologue you yeah. know where it's like oh you don't know uh, you know I'm not the guy you're looking for and all that you know and and so she was she sent it over to me and I, I put myself on tape I, I did not know this at all. And then she snuck my audition <laughs> and pinned it to one of the guys that they requested. I mean, he did his audition, but then she submitted him twice and pinned my audition to his like headshot or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and so my showrunner fast forward, you know, when we're finally like kind of, I, I didn't tell him this until like the, you know, we were done shooting just, just in case. <laughs> By the way, I told him the story. He was like, that explains so much. Cause I, he's like, I remember that. I remember clicking on this guy's headshot or this face or however it works on, uh, you know, whatever software they're using and, and up pops you. And I'm like, wait, who's this, you know, younger black dude. <laughs> and then he said, wait a minute, wait, this is interesting. And, um, uh, you know, I guess he really, really liked my audition. And then, um, and yeah, and then we, you know, I, I met with him as for a second, second call, and you, you got yeah. the lead. You got the lead. That is kick ass. I, I'm, I love Mickey Wark, but I'm sorry, yeah. I can't see Mickey Wark as Spears. You know, I just, I, I don't see that. I, I don't see that. Now we have heard um, time and time again that Black Summer is like the beginning of the apocalypse for another show called Z Nation. Is that true? Is that just a rumor that won't die? Do you know anything about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, technically, I think it is true uh, from from what I hear. I mean, the, the creators of, of the show, he was the you know, executive producer of this. And so, I mean, I think from what I understand, I, I could be mistaken, but um, I think that was part of his pitch to Netflix uh -huh. was that they were thinking of this prequel. And and. Uh, again, from what I understand, you know, actors are last to know. So, <laughs> yeah, but uh, that I, I think Z Nation did was doing really well, or has always done really well on Netflix. Like people just stream it constantly, um, and so I think they were really intrigued by that idea. Now, with that said, um, when they were creating the show, they, you know, they weren't thinking about Z Nation at all. They weren't trying to, you know, see how they could tie it in. They were like, "This is a completely different thing. Good. This is a Good. different." Uh, you know, clearly a very different mm -hmm. vibe. 
stone. Um, so it, it, I think it's technically true, but it, you know, I don't think anyone should expect to see any tie-ins anytime soon. Good, good, good. Because I love Black Summer. Z Nation is more of a comedy. You know, I like the darkness and the seriousness of Black Summer. Uh, I want to go to a question from a follower, him, Greg, on Instagram. Wants to say, well, first of all, he says you did an excellent job as Spears. What attracted you to the character? What attracted me to the character? Um, that is a good question. I, I mean, you know, I mean, as an actor, you you always want to play a part that's very different from yourself. Uh, and yeah, you know, I don't like to consider myself a nice, <laughs> easygoing guy. Um, and Spears is just, I mean, it's just one of those no nonsense, take no shit exactly. kind of dude. And, and pretty kick ass at that as well. So, I mean, that was very interesting. And then, you know, the, the showrunner and the creators of the show, they didn't really give me much backstory either. You know, I mean, I knew as much as the audience knows about Spears. And so they were just like, fill in the holes. <laughs> well, I, you know, that's, that's great. And it actually leads into my next question here, because your character is a complete mystery to us. Uh, even your, the name Spears is not your name. It's yeah. the name of the soldier you killed in the beginning whose uniform you stole. So as an actor, how do you prepare for a role with absolutely no backstory? Right. Um, well, you know, I, I, I'm a writer as well. And so I really just kind of, I, I just sat down and, and journaled and I, and I, I wrote the whole thing just for myself i I mean it's not i'm they're not going to use that no, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. just really for myself and you know you got it because you have to know where you're coming from you know what i mean you have to know what he's done and what he's been through and why he is the way he is and so i just i i literally wrote pages and pages you know uh of of journaling you know from the time i was like five years old all the way to the moment of where we meet Spears just to kind of give myself, you know, that, that groundedness that I needed to do that performance. Wow. That's a, such a brilliant idea. Uh, give your, give yourself the backstory to play the character. Uh, yeah. now, uh, did the writers give you any kind of insight as to what Spears allegedly did to have the whole military looking for him? Nope. No, nope, nothing, <laughs> huh? Yeah, that was another another key piece that I was uh, that I was filling in. Although I I will say that I'm sure we'll talk about this later. But season two, they will uh, we get a little bit we get a little bit into that. Okay, okay, that's good to know. Now, when we first meet uh, meet Spears, you're a prisoner. You're under guard from the military. Your character ends up killing the real Spears, like we just said, stealing his uniform. Do you think that your character is a bad guy in real life a killer or is he reacting to the world around him that is falling apart when he kills spears and so on um in your journaling is spears a bad guy you know it's you never want to look at your character as a bad guy um i think i i definitely think he comes from the streets I think he does what he has to do to survive, as as many do. Um, I think he isn't necessarily on the right side of the law. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. And, yeah, and I think he's done a. I think he's done enough bad things to end up where we first meet him. You know, through the, with the money and and guards and the military, who I don't think was necessarily the military. You know, I think they were just posing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and having the you know shit kicked out of him right when we first meet him you know so i i, I think he's he's a survivor yeah <laughs> absolutely he is a survivor now why do you think spears uh agrees to help rose to get her daughter at the stadium you think initially it was he used it in for his own selfish reasons or then he grew to like her or why do you think he initially agrees to help her you know, that's something that Jamie and I talked about um, and kind of a thing that we, we uh, in our conversations, 
I feel like there's a there's there's a bond between the two, almost like a love at first sight, but not in a romantic way, mm-hmm. you know. And for whatever reason, they both knew they needed each other, yeah. you know. And and I think they know it as soon as you know. It's like you can feel the energy from somebody, you know, whether it's a friend or whether it's uh, you know a romantic partner. Sometimes we're just like. I get you, you know, and you connect. And we were saying it's one of those moments in this, like, you know, uh, apocalyptic kind of world or pre-apocalyptic, the apocalypse is happening. Mm-hmm. You know, I think you, we both knew we need somebody. And for whatever reason, this woman and I connected. And you needed each other. And I'll tell you, the scenes between you and Jamie, uh, the strongest are are scenes in which the stuff is not said just the interaction the expressions the body language between yourself and jamie is is amazing in that school scene where you were the only one who were suspicious of the kids that boy in particular while everyone else wanted to go in there and uh and save them is that because spears is just a naturally cynical person and don't doesn't trust anyone and questions everyone's motivations a little, yeah a little bit i mean that it, i remember talking to to uh director and showrunner of of that episode and uh we you know it, it was one of those things that i was like <laughs> for for lack of a better description it was just kind of like I, i'm always like Black dudes would be like, let's get the fuck out of here. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> really that simple. It was just like, you know, fuck these kids. We got to go. We got to go. You know, like who knows what these kids are up to. They might be some zombie vampire kids. Who knows in this crazy apocalypse, you know, apocalyptic world. But all I know is it doesn't feel safe. We got to go. You know, and so it was really just that simple. I don't know if it's about his natural tendency to be cynical. I think it's just like... Yeah, I, I, and again, it's survival instincts, right? I mean, if you can survive it on the streets, you know, your entire life, I, I think you know danger when you see it, yeah. and yeah. that felt like a, yeah. a dangerous situation. And he's not the person to be like, let's go investigate. Oh, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm like, it's not my business. Yeah, there's someone yeah. else's kids. We're out of here. Uh, yeah. Now you are captured again by whether they're military posing as military and are being carted away in the middle of the night, Rose catches up to you uh, and they try to tell her, we'll take you to the stadium. This is a bad guy right here. He's wanted, but she kills them and saves you. How do you explain that? Um, you know, it, I, I mean, I'm sure Jamie will go more into that tomorrow, but uh, I love that. I uh, love it too. Yeah, because because she, you know, I mean, it's a big decision for her, right? And if you if you notice, that's the first time she kills anybody, whether mm-hmm. it's a zombie or a real person, in the entire season up, up to that point. So, um, I think I think it's again that connection that we have, and that like, who do I trust? You know, because the world is, it's you know something the showrunner always talks about. It's it the zombies are dangerous, yes, but it's also the people mm-hmm. that are are equally as dangerous if not more yeah, dangerous yeah. right because you don't zombies you 100 percent know you can't trust them but people you're just you're trying to gauge right mm-hmm. and so it was a big decision for her like who do i trust i'm gonna go with this guy that i have been with and, and i have a connection with um and we also you know i'll let jamie talk about it more but that's the switch for her she pops those guys and then it's a big that, pivot moment it's a big pivot yeah, big moment pivot character that the old rose is dead you know new survival rose is is born Uh, rambo rose rambo rose and that scene when you see her take out those soldiers that expression on your face uh i don't know if you were going for that expression uh you were kind of like damn like damn girl i didn't see this coming uh is that what you were going for um Or- yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. you know, I mean, cause it, it, you know, funny thing is, you know, they really have the caps. And so when it happens, it was like, bah, bah, you know, like really loud in the ear and they got the flash. So it feels so real in, you know, and uh, and I feel like I was I was I remember just kind of using 
whatever I was feeling in the in that moment. And yes, it's a surprise for sure. Um, that's the best yeah. though when they catch an authentic reaction from an actor on the screen. Uh, that, that's the best. I, I, so I mean that that's just one of the awesome things. Now go. And- the cool thing is with 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 John. I mean, his John Himes is the showrunner. He, you know, he is going. If you notice, there's a lot of single takes, mm-hmm. right? Like they they do very few uh, cutaways. There's very few coverage. Like you know, traditionally you have like a medium of of an actor up or your close up of that. Mm-hmm. But a lot of it is just is wide shots, um, and it's just following, right? And so because of that, because we do some sometimes really long takes like three four five minute takes there's so many like authentic moments that come out of that you know that, that's awesome that's in some awesome way, it kind of felt like peter to some to some degree now you touched on this a little bit earlier moving into season two uh we'll get to the where and when in a little bit but as far as your character spears go you said we'll get a little bit i mean are, are we gonna get to find out what what his deal is at least why is he wanted in any way without revealing what you can i know i don't want to put you on the spot i know you can't reveal too much but let's just say his his past catches up with me okay that's and perfect you get, you get a little you get a little taste of what's what's happening you know and it, i mean this this next season is is insane Oh, God. <laughs> if it's more insane than that season one finale i mean oh my god yeah. um now moving forward i mean carmen uh played by erica howe uh great character on the show uh that episode when you guys come up with the plan to get the weapons in that mm-hmm. underground rage that's going on and she decides to take out just one of the party goers it was always good. People are kind of split on this. Was that part of the plan or did she go rogue? No, it's definitely not part of the plan. Um, you know, I, it's, it's quick. I mean, you know, the things happen so fast in this series. Um, you know, in the diner episode, the episode before, you know, her and her boyfriend say that they, that they know a spot where we can get weapons. And so, Kind of what it alludes to is that these are this is kind of their hangout, ter- yeah. their hangout, they're their people, and so uh, I mean you know there's a lot left to for the audience to figure out, but you know, it's not you know John loves to not ex- over explain, they just like to like let people fill in the blanks, and so that you know moment was her recognizing somebody and that did her wrong, and, and she's like fuck I'm not gonna go take him out yeah yeah. Yeah. but her actions i mean god puts you all you guys in a spot now we got to touch on this finale Uh, i mean i i can't say enough uh first of all it's only 20 minutes long as opposed to the one hour first six episodes uh do you know how the decision came about to make the last episode just 20 minutes or why they decided to go that route and not keep it a full hour. I love the decision, by the way. I'm just curious as to why the switch up. Um, you know, to be honest, I don't. I don't fully know. Um, I think. I think. Yeah, again, John is one of those people who likes to do the unexpected, and and he's very much a less is more type of person. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think he, because originally when I read the script, it was like, there was like, it was like 45 pages, you know, where it was, it was a longer episode. And then I think they just wanted to trim the fat and just. Exactly. Get, get, That's how get, I see it. I see it as a normal episode where you take out that extra fluff. Okay. Yeah. And you go straight to action and you end with action. How long did it take to shoot that 20 minute episode? Um, I mean, we're talking about a lot of action in 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah this was like two and a half years ago, so I'm jogging my memory. Uh, <laughs> um, it was it was, it was, was a few days, for sure. Um, I mean, because there was different locations, um, and like that bridge scene was insane, and there was so, you know, and again, that was all a wonder. So, 
there was a lot of choreography between the background, uh, all the people who were playing the zombies, and you know, it was a, it was quite the dance to to make all that happen. Uh, so that took a full, a pretty much a full day to shoot just that just that bridge scene. Okay, gotcha. Now he... that's actually a perfect example. So when she suits uh, Valez. Mm-hmm. That was a much more drawn out, kind of melodramatic, kind of what you would expect mm-hmm. to see. Like, Just do it. No, do it. No, do it. Do it. You know? And, and then John was like, I don't think it's that. I think it's quick. It's, bang, it's bang. We, we, you know, we got to make split decisions. Boom. Out. You know, and that's, uh, and that's an example of him cutting out the fluff. Like, we don't need that. Let's, let's get it going and, and, and keep it pushing. When you saw the final product, okay, of that 20 minute finale, what did you, as a fan, as a viewer, what did you think of it? Um, I, I loved it. I, I mean, I can't say enough. I damn loved that finale. In fact, to give you an example, uh, I got my son, uh, you know, he's a teenager. So to get a teenager, you got to show them something. If you want to show them something, you got to give them the real hotspots. I'm like, you know what? Just watch this finale with me. It's 20 minutes long. The next day, in two days, he binge-watched the whole first season. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I mean, it definitely it, it definitely left me wanting more, for sure. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and and also the end, the very ending when when um, Anna comes running out of the stadium. Um, you know, it played a little different when we shot it. So the fact that they cut right as she's running made you question is is it I mean, another mirage is it hallucination you know, hallucination because the way they they had originally shot it was she runs all the way up it's a big hug it's a big reunion type of thing again another example of john being like nope cut the fluff let's just leave it here yeah, you know that's an awesome way to end it because i too myself was like whoa wait a minute first of all the stadium is abandoned what are the chances that the only two people is her daughter yeah, and this man who I guess was taking care of her. And you're right, the way they cut it as she was running up, at the end when the credits rolled, you're like wondering, did that really happen? Is she just hallucinating? Now we got to wait till season two to find out. Now, moving on to season two, first question, are you guys done filming it? Yes, we are done filming. We just finished, uh, what was that, like a, m- a month ago. Okay, so as far as you know, it's still in the post-production phase. Uh, yes, it's very much still in the post-production phase. Any ideas on when it might drop on Netflix? Um, yeah, you know. No, I know you can't like, say, but you know. No, no, I don't even know. I think uh, I mean rumor is is spring. Oh, from what I okay, yeah, I can deal with that. You know, tw- yeah, twenty twenty two. I can't deal with you know spring twenty one. I can deal with. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it's it's close because you know we we actually shot the first half before COVID, um, okay. and then COVID happened, and then we were kind of you know in, like everybody else in limbo for for six months or so. But the good thing was in that in those six months they just cut the first half, so right now they're just you know finishing off the last. Uh, the last half yeah uh-huh. yeah and you know the great thing about well one of the great things about netflix uh they don't release any numbers as you know but you know very soon after black summer hit it was very very quickly announced a season two is coming that's how you know a show has been a real hit on uh, yeah. netflix and it's been it's been what two and a half years now since we've seen yeah. it damn yeah. damn right. uh nice. lauren on instagram wants to know how does Spears react to actually seeing Rose's daughter still being alive, if it's not a hallucination? Um, I mean, did he actually believe there was a chance in hell that she was still alive, or he was just going along to give Rose closure? I was playing it for, for the decision I was going with was that there is no way in hell that she's still alive. You know, I mean, we're barely surviving as adults, yeah. you know, um, how is this 14 year old going to make it? And I think for him, it, I mean, I think it's, you know, he's, he's can be a selfish dude. And I think, um, he was just rolling with Rose and a couple of the other folks for his own survival. You know, it's better to roll with a group mm-hmm. than by yourself in this world than, or in that world. And he was just trying to get to the stadium and trying to get to safety. 
what do you think his reaction is? Uh, what do you think is going through his mind to see that the stadium is completely abandoned? Uh, we're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 uh, I had this conversation with my son who, like I said, binge watched it. I'm like, either one of two things happened. Either A, they successfully evacuated everyone, which in watching other zombie shows is really not likely. Or two, it was never really a safe zone to begin with. It was giving people the idea of safety to calm him down, and it was never really a safe zone, but her daughter managed to get in there some way, somehow, with that other dude. We gotta wait. To... For me, it was, I, I, think it, I think it was a safe zone. Okay. Originally. And then I, I think things went, went, uh, went south. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? um, and yeah, I think it because it, it's still kind of a safe zone in the sense that you're able, they're able to like keep it locked. Yeah. you know, it was secure. Uh, yeah, it was secure. Yeah, and, and you know, I but uh, you know, we were playing that there were supplies there and you know that kind of thing. So I think originally it was supposed to be this kind of bunker safe zone, um, but yeah, things just got crazy. Being as vague as possible, can you tell us if season two starts with a little bit of a time jump? from where we end our season one, or does it pick up right where we left off? I think I can say that. I mean, it's, um, yeah, we, this, we're about six months into the apocalypse. So it's a bit, it's a bit of a time jump. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, the characters are definitely a little bit more worn, <laughs> you know, and, and that's what I loved about it. You know, again, it's, it's John, our showrunner just loves to play the reality of it. And, you know, so he was saying, like, okay, in season one, really, that was three or four days that we're following these characters. And all of that happens in three or four days. What does six months look like? Oh, God. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And yeah. It was like, he was really encouraging us to find that space of if that was your every day for a half a year, where would you be emotionally, psychologically, um, physically? You know, we, we look pretty pretty beat up <laughs> absolutely know? absolutely uh the first season like i said was seven episodes are we getting the same amount for season two a little bit more i believe this season's eight episodes eight episodes okay yeah, that's good I that's good pretty full cool. awesome. like I, I think they're all one one hour or so with you know, 50 minutes or whatever it is awesome awesome now let's move on to another fascinating character in my opinion and that is sun or kyung sun as you know she's referred to sun on the show uh when the audience met her we're like oh my god this girl is not going to last a full episode but she right. is probably one of the smartest in the group Yes. Okay. There's that whole language barrier issue that you guys work around. Spears and her, you know, develop kind of a bond as well. What was it like working with Christine Lee? Uh, I mean, me and Christine and I became very close, became very good friends. Uh, uh, you know, I, I had never met her before, before Black Summer. So it, it was awesome. I mean, she's an incredible actress. Um, you know, I mean, she is like everybody, but specifically her, because most people, especially like my friends, are very surprised when I say, "Oh, she she doesn't have an accent," <laughs> you know. Like she's a, you know, she's a, she's uh, from Vancouver, yeah. and you know, she's she's a actress, you know, <laughs> like she's a very very chill chill young woman. And um, do you like that spin that they put on her character, not knowing basically a, a word in English? I do, I do. I mean, that, that was the thing I, I loved about it. I loved that there was these language barriers, you know, not just with her, but also um, uh, with, uh, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the character's name, but the actor's name was Mustafa, uh, the, the, deaf, the, the deaf kid, and, and trying to yeah. communicate with him uh, was such a, you know, I, I love the struggle of that, you know? Mm -hmm. So with Kim Seung, I, I, I love that. And I love that they didn't put any subtitles on it. You know, that was a strong choice. And I think Netflix wanted subtitles, if I'm, if I'm correct. And, um, 
And I think John had to really fight them against it because he wanted the audience to feel the struggle of communi- you know, the communication struggle. Um, so I, 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 I love that. I like that too. I'm glad they didn't put in subtitles because her emotions were coming out and you could see in more than what she was probably saying on the screen. Uh, do you think by the end of the first season, Spears completely trust Rose? Hmm. Um, or does he still have some reservations? I don't think he completely trusts her, no. Um, you know, I, I think he trusts her enough, and he trusts her more than anybody else at this point in his life. But, um, you know, I mean, I mean, how much can you trust somebody after only knowing them for three days? Exactly, you know? yeah, yeah, that's true, uh, that's true. But out of your whole group, you would probably want Rose to have your back, right? Yeah, and I mean, I think, I also think, again, the dynamic changes when she shoots those guards and, and you know, doesn't allow them to take me because they're going to kill me. So yeah. she saves my life. Um, she does something I know that she's never done before. So, so you know, I think that definitely gave her some points in Spears' Spears's book. <laughs> also, how about her stepping up with the whole Valez scene, okay, and her reacting really quickly and mm-hmm. you said it was drawn out initially. They cut it down. I thought that was great to cut it down. The the, the uh, zombies are on your guys' ass. And yeah. Velez even says it himself. He's slowing them down. And she just pulls out her gun and pops him. Does that, yeah. does that in like Spears' mind, win her some points and say, you know, when the tough choice needs to be made, this girl can step up? Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, I think she... Uh, again, I think she just keeps surprising him, you know, and he doesn't expect this out of this, essentially this suburban soccer mom. Exactly, you know? exactly. And he's watching her do what has to be done to survive. Absolutely. Now, you and Jamie had great on-screen chemistry. Like I said, a lot of it was in Stuff Not Said. What was it like working with Jamie King? How did you guys get along off-screen? Uh, great. And she was someone else that I, I got very close to. She was, you know, I was um, initially a little intimidated to work with her. You know, it was my first lead and she's been, you know. Yeah, she's been around for a while. Around for a while. But, I, you know, I, I love telling the story. Like when we first met, she was kind of sitting in, in in the car. You know, they were waiting to bring her to set and, and they were like, oh, Justin, uh, Jamie wants to meet you before you guys start the scene. The first scene was, you know, where I saved her from her husband. And... You know, she just, she sitting in the car and she just looks at me and I look at her and she would just like connect for a second, very, very actory of us. And she was like, yeah, man, it's going to work. And I was <laughs> like, yeah, let's do it. And then that was it, you know. Uh, so she, she, was awesome. she, she really raised the stakes, you know. She's very, you know, she, she's definitely method to some degree. You know, she stays in it. You know, she really brings truth to her work, which always elevates you know everyone else you know when you're like oh man she's she's there you know you you just it's like playing basketball right you just have to step your game up you know when someone's on that level Uh uh-huh uh you guys were both fantastic let's talk about these scary damn ass rage zombies okay what (laughs) is it like when you were you know working with these extras who were playing these rage zombies did you gain any kind of appreciation for the kind of stuff they have to do uh you know what was your reaction or relationship with some of these extra that played these scary ass zombies yeah i mean i definitely had an appreciation i mean you know it it is so much energy to to do that. I mean, you know, you think about what you're actually doing, like, ah, you know, it's like, and doing that, I mean, for, for hours, you know, and running and chasing and, you know, just like doing all that stuff with your face. And like, I mean, they were hardcore and, and, and so excellent. Um, you know, I, I completely appreciated how much energy they were giving to that, you know, cause they were bringing it, man. And, um, and I'm not gonna lie, it was scary. <laughs> It was like there there was one scene where I was um, it was in the where we go in to get the weapons and we go into the underground mm-hmm. kind of 
lair or whatever. And towards the end of that, was, I'm running. I'm running from all the zombies, and I race up the stairs. I shoot the door to get out, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I'm going up the stairs, and I'm supposed to have this, like, kind of horde of zombies chasing me. And the camera's up top, so it feels it feels very realistic because the camera's up top, so I don't even really see the camera. And so I run up the stairs, and I'm supposed to look back and clock them. And at that point, they've tackled uh, two two other regular people, and they're like tearing tearing them apart, right? So they have the blood, and they have like I don't even remember what they were using for the guts, but it's all just like splattering. They're tearing it apart, and and then they they're supposed to like look up at me, and I'm like, oh man, and I'm supposed to shoot and run. And every time I turned around and clocked it, it looked so real. And the way the lights were, and, you know, I was just like, oh, that's going to give me nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, that's, that's, I'm not going to forget that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> are, are you personally a fan of the horror genre? Um, I wouldn't say, I'm careful when I say fan, because there's fans, and then there's, you know. Die hard, I, yeah. I always appreciate it, I, you know, uh. I'm actually oddly coming to werewolves. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> you know? cool. That's always, cool. Always have been. I, I think it was uh, started with Teen Wolf, you know. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, I, I love like really well done, uh, you know, like Bram Stoker's Dracula with uh, Gary Oldman and, and, oh, yeah. and thing. I, I love Jack Nicholson's Wolf, which I feel like doesn't get enough uh, credit. That was good too. <laughs> always like that, but I'm not so hardcore that I'll watch everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, you must have seen zombies where they're portrayed as the slow, snail, crawl moving, as opposed to the zombies in Black Summer. Now, if you were to put yourself, like, in a fan, like, which would you rather face if the world was coming apart? Would you like the slow ones or those scary-ass running ones we have in Black Summer? I don't think that's a question. I'd rather rather be facing the slow ones <laughs> me too. i agree those rage zombies scare the crap out of me yeah. the slow ones at least give you an opportunity to do something were there any pranksters on the set that helped keep the mood light or anything like that uh yeah i mean um pranksters i'd say jokesters uh, um kelsey who plays lance mm-hmm. he was it was really hard to keep a straight face around him. He, <laughs> he is a, he is a funny man. <laughs> you know, it's like I don't know. It's like trying to be do a scene with Will Ferrell or something. Like he is such. He's like really great at improv and and just you know has impersonations and he, he can sing. So he's always singing something or and you're just like. Dude, you're not helping this zombie apocalypse zone right now. <laughs> Kelsey's character, Lance, uh, he doesn't die. We don't see him die. Last we see of him, he is running from a horde. Now, I don't think we've seen the last of him. I'm not going to ask you if we're going to see him in season two. But personally, I don't think we've seen the last of uh, Lance. I think he's right. going to show up maybe in season two, maybe in season three. Who knows? But that guy has a way of finding a way to survive. Uh, totally, I, I I think he, it's he's one of those guys. I, I, the way they described him originally was, John said he wanted a character. He literally wanted a character who was sitting on his couch smoking a bong, <laughs> and then sees a zombie walk, you know, running by his window and was like. Uh, <laughs> and, like walked out his door and and somehow just he's just one of he's just that character who has no business surviving uh-huh. somehow luck just favors him yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Versa, you know oh man like i said when we saw him running i'm like he'll be fine he'll be fine we'll see him again, <laughs> we'll uh, see that again. as an actor you said that tunnel scene with the soldiers was one of your favorite which scene did you find particularly hard to shoot Hard to shoot emotionally or physically? Emotionally, like uh, you know, or maybe a combination of both. Even physically, emotionally, just was like draining on you. Um, emotionally was the kid scene. Actually, mm. it was finding that place because I pulled a gun on the kid, and then so finding the place to, you know, where trying to find an authentic place to where I would actually pull a gun on a kid. You know what I mean, yeah. and, and which normally I wouldn't, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but really trying to find that place of, of 
uh, doing it, and then doing it, and then you know, and actually because the kids are opposite of me and, and holding these, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, there's blanks, but it's like a actual real. I know. Gun. Yeah, it must be hard. So it's yeah, it was a it was an emotionally hard thing. Just even pointing it at a ten year old was, you know, kind of didn't make me feel great. Um, but physically, the I'd say the fight scene in the bathroom was definitely. Oh. Uh, a physically demanding scene, and you know, we did, I don't know, 10 takes of that, you know, and it was all one, a one or so, we were just kind of, well, I mean, they, they actually cut around, but we did a, the full thing a few times. Um, and was that and, all you guys, or did they use stunt doubles for any part of that? That was all us. Oh, man. All us, yeah. I mean, the, the, the soldier I was fighting, he, he's a he's an actor slash stunt guy, but, um, and then even just like the, you know, when I crack his head into a mirror, now clearly it's a fake mirror, but it's, it, yeah, I think it's made out of like sugar, like sugar glass or whatever. And, and but it's still, it actually still cut him. <laughs> you, know, you know, you're still, you're still like slam. He's like, I'll oh, just, you know, these stunt guys are like, oh yeah, just slam my head in it, man. Like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, we did that a number, of, a, a number of times, which, uh, by the end we were just like, and you know, he's like really slamming me against the wall and all that. And, uh, yeah, we were pretty exhausted by the end of that. Were the did the directors like to shoot the episodes in like chronological order, or did they go back and forth a lot? It was pretty chronological. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, we had the luxury chronological. Now let's move on into some other projects. Okay, in 2018, you appeared in the hit movie Blind Spotting. Blind Spotting is now being made into a TV series on Stars where you play a different character from your movie character. What can you tell us about the star's adaptation of Blind Spotting? Um, really, I mean, it's, uh, you really, they really blow out the world of, of Blind Spotting and the world being, being Oakland, you know, mm -hmm. which is where I'm from. I mean, David, Biggs and Rafael Casal, the writers and stars of, of the movie, are two of my best friends from high school. Um, so, you know, so they're they're writing a lot about. Uh, I mean, it's so interesting because they they put so many people, so many of the characters are people that we grew up with, and just some of our friends, and just just interesting characters that that you know live in the Bay Area. I don't know if you've been up to the Bay Area. I've been there plenty of times. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's there's some. There's some oddballs in, in Oakland and Berkeley and, you know, that whole area. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, like we're hippies and gangsters kind of, <laughs> you know, co-mingle. Um, and, yeah, so the world is just kind of uh, blown out. I, I feel like it's, you know, the Oakland version of Atlanta. Very different tone, but kind of how Atlanta has this very, um, it feels like its own little world, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It, they're doing something similar uh, with the Blind Spotting series. Again, a very different tone. Um, they're very different characters, but it's it's his own world. How does it feel working with people that you grew up with? Oh man, it's it's. I mean, that's the dream, right? Yeah. It's uh, it's. You know, I, I just think back. You know, it's probably online somewhere. We made web series. You know, on a shoestring budget and that's being generous it was like five hundred dollars that we all put together you know <laughs> like 10 years ago and like trying to make our little our little web series or whatever which actually turned out not bad um but uh yeah so it just feels like man we've come so far, so far. <laughs> from from that little those little projects that we would do together that no one would watch to now this i mean i actually just shot an episode yesterday and Rafa and David are on set. They're there. Uh, Rafa's acting in it, uh, but he's but he's or head writer. He's showrunner. You know, he's going to direct the final episode. And it was just we were just kind of like just standing on set, like man, guys, we have <laughs> we're here doing this together. You know, and somebody somebody's paying us. On, yeah, <laughs> you, know? you guys are going to be on stars. This ain't no web series. Uh, should Blind Spotting be dropping sometime in 2021, or is it going to be later? Yeah, actually, I, I, I think that's also going to be in spring. Awesome, awesome. Uh, now, I want to talk to you about another interesting project. Now, this is an Instagram-made TV comedy called Quarantine, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a comedy, like I said. Explain 
what's that about to our viewers? Yeah, um, that was created by a good friend of mine, Jerry Ying, um, who, I, you know, we, we were all, like everybody, we were just locked that you know we were in the series lockdown in march or whatever mm -hmm. and uh and my friend was just like he, he was actually i think more fascinated by what you could do with zoom you know it's like i wonder if we can make a series with zoom you know and he's like you can record your zoom conversations he was like what if we so he got a bunch of like tech people and all that stuff together and and yeah we we just shot from our houses individually and even some some actors who were couples you know so they got to have kind of their dynamic like at their house you know um but yeah it's, it's essentially about a opera um cast who in real time so it's like real time of like quarantine mm -hmm. you know so they they have to get locked down and and it's kind of so the joke is it's kind of like a soap within a soap and like you know it's like these very heightened exaggerated soap opera stars you know with egos and you know all this uh, you know and and how they're dealing with being locked down and being in quarantine and and that kind of thing and going through similar phases that I think a lot of us went through, whether it's like, oh, this isn't gonna last, this is gonna pass, so it's not a real thing. I can go out, you know, and and just and. All the way to like, oh man, this is this is real, guys. <laughs> you know, I checked some of it out. What's the uh, tell of you? Do you know the the Instagram account where uh, people can go and check it, uh, check out quarantine? Oh, put me on the spot. Uh, never good with this stuff. Oh, well, I, I think, think if I review, if the, if you go on Instagram and you search quarantine, it'll be like right there or near the top of the list. I think it's called quarantine the series. Yeah, yeah, and is it, it quarantine the series or quarantine the show. Yeah. 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 And anyway, that idea of uh, having everything through the reference point of a Zoom session or something similar has been carried over into actual movies as well, horror movies. Yeah. And they're they're badass. They're scary. Uh, yeah. There is no. Yeah. There is no like real camera. It's all through the the lens of a Zoom. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's not that far fetched, and you can make some really good quality stuff. Yeah, uh, I mean, people are being really creative with it. Exactly, exactly. Uh, we're last final question here, but I want to ask you what, pr which project would you say was your biggest break in your acting career so far? Oh, I mean, it was Black Summer. Hands was, down. Hands down. Yeah, yeah, that was the the big the big one for me. Yo, oh, your your talent agent by slipping in your uh, your audition tape, you know she uh, she she definitely earned her money on that. Yeah. Day. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Justin, uh, I want to thank you so much for being here with us tonight. I know personally myself, I am eagerly awaiting Black Summer season two to start. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, we can have you back on after we see season two. We can break it down some more. We can talk about it some more. And yeah. Blind Spotting maybe will hopefully be released at that point as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here with us. It was an honor. Uh, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. It was a pleasure as always. I hope you enjoyed the chat. Justin, thank you. Guys, I'll be back on again tomorrow with Justin's co-star from Black Summer, Jamie King, who played Rose. So we're going to get Rose's perspective on Black Summer tomorrow. So that should be interesting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, guys, stay safe. Take care of yourselves till tomorrow with our special guest, Jamie King. Stay walking. Good night. Thank you.